Namaskar, welcome to Satya Skills. In this video, I would like to introduce you all Bhagavan Vyasa Maharshi, a great visionary, wonderful editor, and amazing writer. Vyasaya Vishnu Rupaya Vyasa Rupaya Vishnavi Namo Vai Brahma Nidhaye Vasisthaya Namo Namaha. Salutations to Vyasa Maharshi, who is the avatara of Sri Mahavishnu and Sri Mahavishnu is Vyasa Bhagavan, who is the treasure house of Vedas. Salutations to one who was born in the noble lineage of Vasistha. Before going to details about Vyasa Maharshi, there is a small clarification. When we think about Vyasa Maharshi, immediately we remember Mahabharatam, 18 Mahapuranas, Brahma Sutras, Bhagavata Mahapuranam and several other books. All these were written by Vyasa Maharshi only. Yes, he alone wrote all these and it is possible. Think, in the modern days a full-time householder and also a full-time employee with a limited available time is able to write 50 or more books, then why not Vyasa Bhagavan who lived in Dwapar Yuga where the lifespan is more and he was only author without any other activities. Concentration of rishis is exclusively on what they do and they never bother about results and returns. Other external things are not at all significant, thus they invest even that energy also in writing. Thus they can write very easily any number of books. The basic nature of human beings as an ordinary man is that because I cannot write, I cannot imagine, even I cannot accept the fact that other, pe other person can do it. Remember, Vyasa Maharshi alone wrote all these. There is no doubt about it. Vyasa Maharshi, the most prominent among authors of ancient Indian literature, who wrote the largest poetry in the world with one lakh slokas called Mahabharata. He was son of Parasara Maharshi, a great rishi of those days. Parasara Maharshi was a great scholar in Jyotish Shastra that is astrology. His book Parasara Hora is considered as a textbook for astrology even now. Parasara Maharshi was the author of a smriti called Parasara Smriti which is popular even today among scholars. Realizing the most auspicious time to give birth to a great person who will born as Amsha of Sri Mahavishnu, Parasara Maharshi married Satyavati, a fish of women and Vyasa Bhagavan was born. Vyasa Maharshi was born on Ashada Purnima which is celebrated as Guru Purnima in India on a grand scale because Vyasa Bhagavan established an education system suitable to people of Kali Yuga through his disciples. Being son of Parasara Maharshi, he was popular as Parasara. He was born in an island and he looks dark in color, thus he was known as Krishna Dvaipayana. Immediately after his birth, he just walked to do tapasya and he did intense tapasya in Badarika forest that is called Badarika Vanam, thus known as Badarayana. He divided single huge heap of Vedas into four divisions, thus he became Veda Vyasa. Vyasa in modern terminology means editor, in literally Vyasa means a person who divided. He divided the entire Vedas into four parts and gave names Rig Veda, Ejur Veda, Sama Veda and Adharna Veda. Why he did like that? By the end of Dwapar Yuga, he realized that men of next Yuga, the Kali Yuga, the people will be with short span of life and less intellectual faculties, thus cannot study entire Vedas in one life. Out of his compassion and concern for the welfare of true aspirants, he divided Vedas into four divisions. He also established suitable system of teaching and learning technique to the aspirants of Kali Yuga. Accordingly, he entrusted responsibility of four Vedas to four of his disciples. The disciples who received the responsibility were Rigveda to Paila, Ejurveda to Vaisampayana, Samaveda to Jaimini and Adharvana Veda to Sumanta. According to modern calculations, Veda Vyasa 
or Bhagavan Vyasa Maharshi lived around 6000 years back. It is only a modern calculation, not the calculations of Sanatana Dharma. Maharshi was a great visionary who was able to predict the skills and capabilities of men in Kali Yuga and he wrote all these great books only from that point of view. He wrote Mahabharatam to bring Sanatana Dharma and also remind their people their own duties so that they will not leave the path of righteousness called Dharma Margam. As people are less capable to understand the Brahma Vidya, the ultimate knowledge of Indian spirituality, he wrote Brahma Sutras. All this is possible because of his compassion to the people. His aim was to help every person and every aspirant of this land. That is why we are blessed, we are blessed people in this world. That is all in this video. Thank you for watching. God bless you.